Welcome to our level three uh, tutorial. Today's tutorial is on classifying pulps. In other words, different ways of uh, marketing pulps, either for sale or, or for purchase, depending on, on which end of the uh, process you're coming from. There are five main classifications of pulp. You can either market pulp depending on the pulping process that you've used. You could do it depending on the raw material that's going through the pulping process. You may want to do it depending on the type of bleaching it's gone through. You could be interested just in the pulp yield or you could base it on, on fibre length. And we'll take a look at uh, each of these classifications and then we'll finish off by looking at what the um, opportunities are for using these types of pulp, or the application, where you would use each type of pulp and why. So you might want to do it by virtue of its pulping process. So you may want to sell mechanical pulp because it's been through the mechanical pulping process. What does that mean? High yield, lots of lignin there, hydrophobic fibres, stiff fibres, therefore stiff papers for uh, protecting your stiff board for protecting your uh, pharmaceuticals or cereals. You might put it through a mixture of mechanical and thermal pulping. It may be semi-mechanical, semi-chemical, what we generally call hybrid pulping. <laughs> semi-chemical on its own is just another form of uh, hybrid pulping. It may be a pure chemical pulping process you've seen mentioned in other videos. Or it could be what we call a soft cut, fully chemical. And this is producing rayon and viscous, viscose, essentially where you dissolve a whole tree and then re-precipitate some of the cellulose. You may, on the other hand, choose to uh, classify your material by the raw material, by what your starting material was. So it might be wood such as hardwoods and softwoods, you know, pine, fir, spruce, birch, eucalyptus. It may be agricultural waste used in some parts of the world like Pakistan, India, Spain, so straw from uh, cereal production. <laughs> there may be annual plants, so things like uh, grasses, esparto grass, hemp, jute, kenaf, Abaca. You may, it may be your raw material, maybe rags. You may collect old clothing and, and make paper from that, which was how paper making was done in Europe in the very beginning. You may say it's made just from recycled fibre or, or secondary fibre, depending on what terminology you use. Um, or it could be a DX pulp. There are some mills in the world that will take in secondary fibre, de-ink it, and now sell sheets of de-inked pulp, just like you buy sheets of virgin pulp. You might decide to market your pulp by its bleaching history. At one time, nearly all pulps were bleached using chlorine, but of course, we eventually found out that that's very dangerous because the chlorine can interact with lignin and produce uh, dioxins and other nasty chemicals. So now we have pulps that are TCF, totally chlorine free, so they don't use chlorine in the bleaching process at all. And there are pulps that are ECF, elemental chlorine free. So there are some chemical compounds there that contain chlorine, but it's not in a form that can interact with lignin to form dioxin. <clears throat> there may be chlorine bleach pulps where people use things like either chlorine gas or hypochlorite. You don't see very many of those these days. You may choose to do oxygen or ozone bleaching. Or of course you may choose not to bleach them at all and have an unbleached pulp. And unbleached pulps have a big advantage because they are stronger than any of the bleach pulps. You may decide to market your pulp depending on the pulp yield and uh, working down. Of course, we have very high yield pulps, which are the mechanical pulps, such as groundwood and pressurised groundwood. Um, slightly lower yields, very little difference really. Refiner pulps, so RMP, refined mechanical pulp, and TMP, thermal mechanical pulp. They may be medium yields, 
these are the hybrid pulping systems, CTMP, chemi, thermal, mechanical pulp, neutral, sulfite, semi-chemical, and chemical, mechanical pulps. <clears throat> there may be medium yield, the sulfite and sulfate. Sulfate, of course, is the craft process. You may have fairly low yield pulps, things like straw and esparto and bagasse. Bagasse, of course, is the, is the fibre left over from sugarcane usage. Um, fairly low yields, and of course, the lowest yield of all, rayon and viscose. So then, so we're taking the whole tree, dissolving all this cellulose, and then re-precipitating re these materials. And the final section, of course, was fibre length. We might try to sell long fibre pulps or medium fibre pulps or sharp, short fibre pulps. The very long fibre pulps, bigger than 10 millimetres, things like abaca, cotton linters, hemp, uh, used in either security papers or tea bag paper, coffee builds paper, things where you've got a very uh, either a need for durability in the case of cotton or where you have very lightweight sheets, you know, some. Um, Tea bag paper can be six, seven, up to 12 grams. So you need very long fibres so that you have the strength to go through the pulping process. Medium fibre length pulps, two to 10 millimetres. These are the typical softwoods and hardwoods from the northern regions. And then you've got sharp fibre pulps, less than two millimetres. Um, Tropical hardwoods, again, straws and grasses. Where do we get these trees from? Well, as you saw in the earlier graph, hardwood fibres are really sort of dominating the world. And the two main hardwood fibres that are used above all the other hardwood fibres are eucalyptus and birch. Spain and Portugal, or Iberia, produce a variety of eucalyptus known as eucalyptus globulus, whereas uh, Latin America uh, produce a different species of eucalyptus known as eucalyptus grande. So be aware of the two differences. And so the other major uh, hardwood fibre is of course birch, and that's, you know, you know, the, there's a dominance of uh, birch fibres in North America. So Canada and also Scandinavia. What do we use these grades for? Well, BHKP, bleached hardwood craft pulp. So hardwoods, short fibre, little strength, good for printing and writing papers. BSKP, softwood fibres, long fibre, so they'll have high tear, high tensile, good burst. So these are the most versatile of all the fibres, used in a whole variety of things. Top liner of uh, um, board production, maybe sack paper, printing and writings, graphic papers, tissue, cartons, envelopes, lots of paper. NMHW, Northern, this is a new letter for you, M, M is mixed. So Northern mixed hardwoods. So it's not just one hardwood like birch or beech or eucalyptus. There's a whole mixture of hardwoods there. But hardwoods are hardwoods. Same rule applies. Short fibres, little strength. Good for formation, printing and writing. Southern mixed hardwoods. Okay, slightly shorter than northern mixed hardwoods. So again, same print, uh, fibre properties, same uses. TMP. We're off uh, purely chemical fibres now, TMP, thermal mechanical pulp, that's uh, put through a, a refiner. You get a lot of damage there. They'll be short, they'll be stiff because all the uh, lignans there, they produce bulky sheets. So where do we use them? In LWC papers, newsprints and, and supercalibre grades. CTMP, a hybrid pulp, chemi, thermal, mechanical pulp. Less damage to the fibres than these, less lignin around. So they're still short, they're still stiff because there's some lignin there. They'll produce bulky sheets, so good for the middle layers in uh, multi wall builds. BTCMP, bleached chemithone mechanical pulp, same as this really. Uh, often used in folding box board. 
SGW stone groundwood. Again, it's a mechanical fibre, so it's going to be short, it's going to be stiff, and it's going to be bulky. And just like this one, just like TMP, lightweight coated papers, newsprints, and some colour prints. And final slide in this series. Um, moving on to the non-wood fibres, we've got cotton. The one word that's inextricably linked to cotton is durable or durability. Cotton and durability you must keep as a pair of words. Why do we put cotton in? Because we want to improve the durability. What do you do on to durable paper? You put cotton in. So what are the properties of cotton? It's long, it's pure, and because it's pure it's durable and it's also strong. Where do we use cotton? We use it in security papers like banknote paper and passports. We use it in high quality printed and writing papers and we also use it in, in some artists' papers. Other non-wood fibres, manila, flax, hemp, sisal. These are very long and strong. So again, coffee filter, tea bag, cigarette paper. And uh, esparto, typically about 1.1 millimetres long. It's a grass, so short, stiff and bulky. There used to be dozens of esparto mills in the UK when uh, paper making first started get, getting going. But, be, and it made beautiful printing papers because they were all so short. But as the printing processes went faster, the strength demands got more intense and it was impossible to make strong enough papers out of esparto. So we moved over to using hardwood softwood mixtures. Uh, but today it's still used in cigarette tissue. It holds open the structure of the uh, of the sheet and controls the porosity. Well, thank you for listening to this tutorial. Uh, you'll find more information on our uh, social media.